Hi guys, my name is Ben. And I'm Nathan. And welcome back to the Pride of Villa. We're here for our Aston Villa versus Liverpool match review from the 7th, no, 5th, 5th. 5th of July 2020, where Liverpool won 2 0 against Aston Villa. So if you are going to enjoy this video, please leave a like, subscribe, turn on notifications. Check out fairgroups.com. We don't need to mention it, but we're going to keep doing it because we know you love it. Use our discount <laughs> code Pride of Villa if you want 10% off the based gaming accessories in the market. You will save some lovely money for the pub so you can go and get COVID 19 as well. But without <coughs> further ado, we're going to jump straight into it. So, Nathan, 2 0 to Liverpool. A really, de- a really decent performance, but overall, it just feels like I never. It's just another loss, really. What do you make of it? Well, we were both going into it knowing we're going to lose. And I basically just said to you, it's basically like a game to try new things. The only thing we tried out was Rainer. But I did see a lot of positive things from him. Louise, <sighs> El Ghazi too. Uh, Mings, maybe. Yeah. Um, Grealish seems a little bit more arsed. But yeah, I did see some more... Um, enthusiasm for the game obviously it dropped the last half an hour I'd say but yeah it's, it's good to see but is it enough to keep us up probably not what do you think yeah um, as we said there is a lot of positives that can be taken from that game um, I think in part it helps to Liverpool just not be good on the day I think they're really poor um, yeah. but the overriding view for me just doesn't matter because it's, it's Liverpool. None of us were really expecting something, although no. the, the delusional people on Twitter who try and make it stay positive. Um, it was a good performance. It just, in the end, it just all fell to bits. Um, and that's why, really, it just doesn't feel like anything worth talking about because it's just, <laughs> there's just nothing really much to say on it. It was a, apart from the two goals that Liverpool scored, it was a really boring game, I thought. Um, some positives, you know, Dean changing the formation to a four four one one. Um it was yeah. nice nice to see that. It looked a little bit better, more attacking, um, driven rather than trying to stay back and defend. Um some good changes to the team. I thought Rayner was really solid in his role compared to Nyland. Um yeah. and I think Trezeguet was a lot better today. I know a lot of people were slagging him off on Twitter. Like that. I don't know, I don't understand why they were saying El Gars, he was great. Buffalo El Ghazi was rubbish. He wasn't doing anything. I did see a lot more from El Ghazi in this game from the others. I'm not saying it was a, a really, really big change, but I'm going off. I'm not sure if it was him and, and Douglas Louise when they did that fabulous tackle. Oh, yeah. And uh, no, you this... know, they're doing the tricks. Yeah. Oh, uh, lovely. I just think El Ghazi was just rubbish again. I thought Trezeguet was really doing well. Um... I only saw a few kicks from Trezeguet, but I, I did see he, uh, he did look like he was asked for this game. I mean, yeah. he did get that one goal uh, the first time we saw Liverpool at our home. But yeah, it is, it is a positive to um, take from Trezeguet. Obviously, that was the first time he started in, I don't know how many games. Yeah. Um, I think on that side of the positives, there is definitely negatives. Defensively... Yes. Although it's better, it's still just not good enough. Um, Minx needs to be out the team now. He is absolutely. <laughs> yeah, honestly, it's, a, it's rubbish now. It really is being rubbish now. Um, he looks like he could be injured. Um, so I'd like yeah. to think Dean might make a change there. But who knows? In the final third, we're still. We're, there's nothing there in the final third. We can be this. We can have a good attacking performance against Liverpool, but if we can't finish the goals, um, we're not going to win the match. Because simply put, football is about scoring more goals than your opponent. Yeah. And if we can't do that, we can't win a game. Um, and it's just really annoying to see that when you put in such a good performance, but no end product, it's really annoying. Um, but let's just dive straight into player ratings, make this a little quicker review than usual. So we're going to start in goal, Pepe Reina. Oh, give him a seven. A Being seven? Two. I'll give him, I'm only saying now because he, he didn't do like a thing I was talking about where he comes too far out of the box. 
the last. I don't step. think. Yeah, he, he didn't do that. So actually, no, I won't give a seven. I'll give a six. But it's definitely a big improvement. And if you ask me if I want to start him against Man United, I still would feel hesitant. Yeah. But I I'll think start him. not. Uh, yeah, I, I do think he should start. Though I, I do feel hesitant, but. They both let goals at the end of the day, but we need something new now. We need someone with experience, I'd say. So, yeah. What, Tom Heaton, who's injured? Tom Heaton, love to see him back, but he's just... It's not going to happen. Um, <laughs> I'd give Rayner a six as well. I think he's a lot more yeah. sturdy, a lot more confident in that role than Nyland. Um, but really, the two goals went in. Could have done a little bit better, I think. Um, just the defence, weren't it? It's Shocking. just the defence is really letting down. Left back, we have Neil Taylor. I'm going to give him a six. I thought, yet oh, again, yeah, me too. Yet again, he was um, solid there, much better than target for me in these past two games. Um, and a bit more of um, a more natural left back than target. It just feels like it takes forever for target to get going, whereas Taylor can slot right in and look yeah. good straight away. We've then moved on to centre half. So we have House. I'm going to give him. Uh, five. five yeah five um, there's not much to say on the house because I didn't really think he did a lot in the game um, and I know it's centre half you're not really going to have the most to do well apart from defensively um, but even then it really wasn't anything coming down to him that he wasn't unable to cope with um, but as I say he's just got to be sharp and he needs someone better alongside him. Um, to the right end, we've got Tyrone Ming, so I'm going to give Tyrone a two. Um, it's, not like, it's not like you can joke. Like, he really is being poor. Um, you know, I'll give him a three. A three? Why? Only because I did see a little, little, little bit more effort. That's all I can say. Still no, not worth the money. Defensively, it's shown out why at Bournemouth he never got time because he can't. He's so poor <laughs> defensively. Um, I think he's he's not good enough closing down players. You know, you talk about being a leader. I still don't see him. I think he has got a bit of an attitude. Yeah. He pulled up injured, which I think, yeah. um, although he was able to carry on the game, I think Dean should have made the change. Um, so that's kind of bad on both of them. Um, Who would you change him for, though? Conta and then put El Mahamadi in his place. Yeah, yeah. Makes, makes, sense. makes makes yeah. sense. Um but he needs a refresh, he needs someone changing. Um and I just don't understand. I don't understand where Engels is unless he is injured. I don't know what's happened to him. Um, I'm not sure if he is injured, but just play, just, play, just, just play house on so Conza. Um <laughs> on the right we've got Ezra Conta as you said. Um, I'm going to give him a four. Again, nothing yeah. to stand out for me. Mainly just out of position again. The amount of times I was watching the game and seeing Andy Robertson with the amount of space he has. Because um, <laughs> House is so so centred to the pitch that he's almost trying to play as another centre-half. It's annoying. Cause he's just, he's, well, I don't know how many times I've said he's not his natural position. He's not doing yeah. his job right. And just play El Mohamedi or Gilbert there. It's simple, really. Um... Got to think of it. So it's four in midfield. We go with El Ghazi. We're going to give him a three. I thought, yeah. Wait, five? He's, oh, but how? Because I, I don't know what game you were watching, but when wasn't I was that good. Him, I was just like, bloody hell, he's made a difference. He just hasn't made a difference. So everything, for me, for me, the moment that subbed him up in that game was the bit where the ball comes in, he's on the edge of the box and he tries to go for an overhead kick, misses it with one leg. <laughs> and he's just standing yeah. there. He's just standing there, like he's rubbish. He no. really is. You know, there's only so many times I can defend him, but that game is rubbish, and there is no impact from him. Um, I don't. It defensively, he can't. He can't do his job as if, if he has to go track back and defend. Attacking wise, he didn't no. bring the game. Um, and as I said, Trisga did a much better job for me, so I don't understand what Twitter's going on about. Um, but I'm going to give him a three. Uh, we move on to the the midfield. I think we have McGinn. 
I think McGinn was playing again today. Um, was he? Yeah, he was. <laughs> Don't you dare say you didn't notice him. <laughs> I did. I'm sorry, man. Oh, yeah. crap. He yeah, got bit... one, one shot, that's it. Well, that's what I'm saying. He looks a bit more natural to himself, used his body a bit more to get past um, players looking like the McGinn that we've seen. Again, I think really it doesn't matter about his performance this season. I think the time he's had away from the um, the game, um, he's just not going to hit the form that we expect him to. So I think we're just going to have to let him off really. But I'd like to, if he is going to stay next season, I'll, he needs to improve. Um, so I'm going to give him a five. I thought he was fine. Um, you know, as I said, he was starting to become his more natural self. Um, but again, he's just going to have to take time with that. Next up, we move on to Douglas Louise. I'm giving him an eight. I thought he was, I thought he was a standout. Um, he see, was all right. See, are you serious? I'm joking. Yeah, I'll give him a 7.5. 7.5? Why don't you just give him a... Because I... I don't know, he showed a little bit more than he actually does show now, but I feel like he did deserve a goal. I thought... If anyone's going to drive that team forward, it was Douglas Louise rather than uh, Grealish. He looks so good. I think the moment for me was the, as you said, the bit with Mane. And um, I think it was him and El Garza or him and Good Treads again when they're trying to, yeah. when they're nutmegging the players. Um, that was spot on. The skill that he shows, the ability that he possesses. Um, it's really exciting. I do have to say, yeah. though, you'll talk about Villa legends. If he did. If he was to stay on, and he is still quite young, if he was to stay on, I can I can, I can see him being like captain say, one day. It's going to take a lot longer for him. I, don't, I just hope he stays with us. I don't think he's going to stay. I think Man City will probably buy him back at some point. Um, he doesn't he doesn't scream Villa legend to me. He just screams another player in that team. If he stays with us, one day he will. Like I can but see yeah, it with him. I hope- can't see it with anyone else. Hopefully he does, but I don't think he will. Oh, but, love it. But, but for that guy, I'm going to give him an eight. On the the next wider player, Trezeguet, I'm going to give him a six. Four. I thought out of every. I'm not going to give him a three. A three? Oh, shut up, Tony Marcus. But today, a four. I'm going to give him a I have to. a six. I think, unlike everyone else, I thought Trezeguet was actually a bit more in the game. Um, and I think he really skips offering so much more than El Ghazi. Um, and I want to be opposed to starting him now in this position um, rather than playing as a wide player, more as a, um, a wide midfielder. Um, so he doesn't have to make the runs as much. He, he, he's not really totally reliant on being there. He can work in the midfield. Um, I yeah. think he works much better there with the formation as well. Um, I thought he was really good today. Not today. Saturday. Um, move on to the next midfielder in Jack Grealish. Thought he was all right. Uh, so I'm not saying he's a standout. It was much better, but still not. Oh, no Four. impact. No impact. I'd say definitely not a six. I'd say five. Five. He was just there. He had some moments. Um, yeah. You know when Graham Sonus was Sonus was slagging him off on Sky earlier. Um, you just have oh, to. Oh God! You just have to go on the sports pages and see he's the second best player um, in the league with um, assists and chances created. So how can you be saying that you're not racing when he's obviously creating that amount of chances? Um, he did look good. There was some good moments from him, but yet again, he's not. He's not hitting that form that he was hit that he had before. No, um, I'm seeing that. I'm seeing that um, for a long time. So so hopefully he does come back to it. And then finally, I think it was Davis starting. Yeah, Davis and yeah. No, it's Davis. Uh, no. Right. I, give, I, give I do three. not know what to give him. Three. Don't think he was that good today. It's as I said. It's as I said with the final third. He has none of it. As good as he can be, it screams how lack of experience he has, the lack of goals he has. He needs that time in the championship, really, on a season long loan. Um, to develop as a player because really it's not working now. He hasn't scored, I believe, since the 2018, no, 2017 18 season under Steve Bruce. Um, so it's been a really long time. Um, if it has been, um, 
but it's it's just that game screams to me Samata. Um, but even then, it just shows the lack of quality we have. So I think no impact from me, no real finishing um, threat about it. I'm going to give him a three. Peter. Great. Um, <laughs> right, subs. Oh, God, he was... It was I know Samata came on. It was Wait, did some... it? I'm too sure now. No. It was Vasilev. Oh, yeah, Vasilev, which was just a waste of time. <clears throat> Give it some minutes. Vasilev, oh. El Mohamedi. Uh, Jota. Yeah, Jota, waste of time. That was useless. Um... I was. thought Lansbury should have come on. I'm not gonna lie. I thought Lansbury should come on. I think he actually does so like show some like he can get goals. Like the only time I did see him like really good was against Crystal Palace. Yeah. He only made three Okay, so Samata did come on for El Ghazi. It was right. then Jota for Keenan Davis and it was Vasilev for Trezga. I'm gonna give all three of <laughs> I'm gonna give all three of them a four. No real impact. Sure. Well, that's not the point. He made the subs after the, the after the goal. We didn't make an impact. I didn't think they were bad, but Just, the, the team was already de- dejected when the goal went in. So there was no, no real energy going there. So, um, crap. Yeah, the manager. I'm going to give. Five. We're gonna. Ooh, why? Formation was different. It actually looked like we were doing much better. As I said, playing some attacking football, looking much better. Really good team, looking like we could do it over Liverpool. Um, but really, it didn't happen again. Sub wise, he made them after the goal rather than before. And I really thought he would bring on the camera. Um, he did it too late, if you ask me. Well, yeah, well that's, the po- that's the point. You don't make those subs after the goal because the, the first goal did not go in until 71st minute. So by 65 minutes, you should be considering bringing one or two subs. So I'm considering we have five substitutes you can make. Um, you should be doing it. So, yeah. Um, move away from the player ratings. We're going to the next match really quick. Manchester United... Uh, unbeaten in God knows how long, managing to get a 5 2 win over Bournemouth, our relegation rivals. Um, I don't think we need to speak on this very quickly. We can save it for a preview, but simply put, are we going to get spanked? Well, basically, I've already said um, I did put a comment on the Aston Villa's Instagram because I, I, just, I saw them post about training for the mm-hmm. game, and I was just like, right, this one is a it has to be a win, but it's just not going to be a win. Yeah. Like, if we don't win this one, like, there's literally no way we're staying up. Like, that's not the point. That's not the point. Look, we're playing against a team that looks very good. We can't, we can't take on, um, we can't take on all these other teams. We can't take Sheffield United on that. That's it. No, 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 no. It's different. I can't see it happening. Manchester United have a very good side now. Very good side. They are in form. They're a top six team. You know, it's one of them. You've simply got to say, you know what? We've got to more... fight them, though, haven't we? Well, that's what I'm saying. But you've got to be realistic. It's some... We're not probably going to get anything out of the game. You I know, know we're not, but we maybe... should be. I wouldn't say should. We could. No, like, I mean, like, we have to. Because that's the only way we're staying up. That's how I'm seeing it. I know we're not going to win. I don't, think it's against, I don't think it's against this game. I think... It will, because Watford, I th- I think playing West, Norwich, aren't they? Well, yeah, they're playing them right now, as we speak. Um, West, Ham, Sorry. West, Sorry. West Ham, I think, are staying up. I think it really... Yeah. Is, it's, now, it's now between us and Watford. Um, but you've got to think, we've still got Everton, Palace, Arsenal, West Ham. Arsenal, depending on how they play. We've got to be realistic, though. You know what I mean? Everton... Oh, we're not going to get anything against West- Everton. Yeah, we can. Not Arsenal. Everton. Yeah, I mean, not, did you not watch them yesterday? Dreadful. Them. Yeah, but Ball. we're like 40 times more dreadful. We're not, <laughs> though. Yeah, we're like the worst team. We're just not the you're worse than me. Everton, we can get something against because they've been poor. 
Um, we can't go all the way to Everton to get a win. I'm sorry, but they're eleventh. They're eleventh in the t- table. They're not even. Like I know, good. but Crystal Palace, we can get something. Yes, I know. Yeah, I'll, I'll go and then, and then Crystal Palace, and then West Ham. Really, we can as well, depending on how they form us until the end. It's Arsenal. Arsenal. United. Arsenal and United. Cool. I admit, forget about them. It's, it's gone. Um. Be very strange if we even get well, we, draw, can, we can we can get something from those games, so you know, stop it. So, re- so you're saying then that we've got a great chance of winning against Everton than we do against Crystal Palace. I'm not saying we've got a great chance. I'm saying we have a chance. It's not a great. We don't have a great chance. Um, we have a chance. It's not. I just none, none of the chances we have are great. You know what I mean? Um, no, none of them are. Like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So none of them's a great chance. All I'm saying is, if you actually watch the games, if you actually look at the form and the team play, Everton we can beat, Palace we can beat, Arsenal really, depending on what day we catch them, can get something from there, and West Ham we can beat. It's just form wise, United. I don't think we're going to get anything. I think we are going to get spanked. We both know that. Yeah. You just, got, you, just got, you just got to look ahead of where that's going. So be confident, Nathan. Be confident. Uh, ben, Ben, I can't be right now. I'm actually stressing over it because I, l- I love being in the Premier League. I love being a big team now. But when we we're play not a big like team. This, <laughs> we conquered Europe in 1982. Oh, that was 30 years ago, you plum. That's when we were established as a, a, a mighty team, but... What, in 90... It, it, it took 30... It took 1982 to be a mighty club. Let's, let's be real on... now, though. Let's be real. Let's be real. All right, I'm going to say something now. We beat Everton, yeah. We beat West Ham and Crystal Palace. That's nine points. Yes. Depend Because I've, I've been looking at Watford's fixtures, Karina. Um, right. Ideally, Watford are playing Norwich as we speak, so Norwich need to win. Um, I hope they do. I'd, I'd like to be a draw, but I mean, it has to be um, Norwich a win. A draw's livable. But all I'm saying is, Watford have shown they're not very good right now. And I think, oh, as we speak, it is 1 1. Oh, God. That's fine. How many That's minutes fine. in? 23. That's fine. We'll probably end like 5-5 five, five or something. What I'm saying is Watford have got Newcastle, who are decent now. They've got West Ham, who could get something from that. So if West Ham win that, that's fine. Yeah. They've, got, they've got Man City, who will probably turn them over. And then they've got Arsenal, so they've got two hard last games. We've got one sort of hard game, and then we've got West Ham. So you are you in the mindset of there's a good chance we stay up? I don't mind what ha- I don't mind what happens really. Um, you don't mind. Oh. No, but that's what that. No, but what I'm what I'm saying is, if we go down, it's fine. You know what I mean? Because you can accept it if we've just been poor, which we have been. Um, if we stay up, although it doesn't seem likely, there is a good chance you can do it. It's that idea of even though you know you're crap, it's the hope that'll kill you. You know what I mean? So that's yeah. that's why you still feel like this. You still think we can do it. And although I do, I do although, think we can do it. But although I do believe we are still going down, um, it's the hope that believes in me that we can still do so. And we can. It's simply put, if we play like that, if we play like that against all the other teams that we did at Liverpool, we can stay up. We can get wins. He just needs to put the right players in now. Stick to that performance for ninety minutes. Just give it everything he's got. It's it's everything or nothing now. So the last, I think the last win was Burnley. I I think anyway. The Is last, that true? It wasn't Burnley. It was. <sighs> Probably was Burnley. Let me yeah, just, I, let me just. I heard something about that, but I wouldn't be surprised. It's just like a win for us right now. It's just God. It just has to happen. Uh, last win was Le- well, it was Leicester City in the EFL Cup, but it was actually Watford at home. Ah, Watford. So, 
it's just the hope that's going to kill us, but hopefully we can do it. And speaking on that, we're going to end this review there for Liverpool versus Aston Villa. Tune in for, obviously, our content in the final five games of the season. I want, to t- I want you in the comments to tell us if we're going to be staying up or not. Um, let's get some it's fan interaction. Let's get some fan interaction there. Um, if you, if new like goal, if we get 10 likes on this video or any video following on from this, we will upload another football video. Ooh. Ooh. So keep, so make sure you hit 10 likes on this video and we will do that. Check out photogrips.com, check out our social pages. But without further ado, he's been Nathan, I've been Ben, up the villa with the pride of villa. We'll see you later, boys. Jimmy on a beat, boy.